Whether it be cheesecake, truffles, or cheese blintzes, dairy products have become an essential part of Shavuos festivities. There is often talk about kosher meat. Which animals are kosher and which are not? And the intricate processes that pertain to ritual slaughter. In honor of the upcoming holiday of Shavuot, this month's segment of Kosher Corner will turn its attention to milk and dairy products. We now turn to Rabbi Chaim Fogelman of the OK Kosher Labs, where they do kosher without compromise, who will introduce the connection between Shavuot and dairy products and discuss related matters of kashrut, including Cholav Yisrael, Cholav Akum, and Cholav Stam. Hi, and welcome to the Kosher Corner, where we discuss everything you need to know about kosher. My name is Rabbi Chaim Fogelman. This program is brought to you by JLI and by OK Kosher Certification, where they do kosher without compromise. In honor of the upcoming holiday of Shavuos, the holiday which we celebrate and thank Hashem for giving us the Torah, let's talk about the minig, the custom, to eat dairy foods on Shavuos. Although it's not a mitzvah, a commandment, to celebrate the festival by eating dairy products, it is a well-accepted minhag, a custom through the Jewish world to do so. And it is known that minig Yisrael, a Jewish custom, tairahu, is just as important, and sometimes even more important than a din, a Jewish law. So why do we eat dairy on Shavuos? And what are the kosher concerns that are connected with milk and dairy products? There are many reasons that are given for why we eat dairy on Shavuos, like to commemorate the 40 days that Moshe Rabbeinu spent on Mount Sinai receiving the Torah. The gematria, numerical value of chalav, the Hebrew word for milk, is 40. Ches is 8, Lamed is 30, and Bez is 2, equals 40. 40 corresponding to the 40 days. The numerical value of chalav, 40, has further significance to the Torah in that there were 40 generations from Moshe Rabbeinu who received and recorded the written Torah till the generations of Ravina and Rav Ashi who wrote the final version of the oral Torah known as the Talmud. And in addition, the Talmud begins with the letter Mem, which is 40, and ends with the Mem as well. And some give the reason for eating dairy because an alternative name for Mount Sinai is Har Gavnunim, the mountain of majestic peaks. The Hebrew word for cheese is Gavina, etymologically related to Har Gavnunim. Interestingly, the Gematria, the numerical value of Gavina, is 70, corresponding to the Shivim Panim Latayra, 70 faces of Torah. But the most popular and well-known reason for eating dairy on Shavuos are related to Kashras, the laws of eating kosher. When the Jewish people received the Torah at Mount Sinai, Hashem gave them the laws of kosher, including instructions for how to slaughter and prepare meat for consumption. Until then, the Jews had not followed these laws. Thus now, all their meat plus their cooking pots were considered not kosher. So the only alternative was to eat dairy, which requires no advanced special preparation. And since the Torah was given on Shabbos, when slaughtering and cooking are prohibited, the Jews could not just slaughter new animals or kosherize, kosher their pots. Therefore, the Jews had to wait until after the holiday to eat meat again. And luckily, the Jews already had plenty of milk available from before Shabbos, which they had been using to feed the various animals that accompanied them on their journey in the wilderness. So since our forefathers only ate dairy on the first original Shavuos, we do the same today. Others say that the day the Jews received the Torah on Mount Sinai was the very first time the Jews ate dairy products altogether. And that is because there's a general prohibition of eating a limb from a live animal. This prohibition is known as Aver Min Hachai, which logically should also include milk, which is a product of a live animal. Aver Min Hachai is actually one of the seven Noahide laws which apply to all humanity since the days of Noah, and the Jews observed these laws as well prior to Sinai. However, upon receiving the Torah, which refers to the land of Israel, the land of Eretz Yisrael, as Eretz Zavas Chalavu Devash, the land that's flowing with milk and honey, dairy products became permitted to the Jews. In other words, at the same moment that their meat became prohibited, dairy became permitted. 
They ate dairy on that original Shavuos, and we do the same today. So when it comes to dairy products, what does the kosher consumer need to know? And when I say dairy products, I mean milk and all milk derivatives, from yogurt to whey to ice cream and cheese. Eggs, even though they are bought in the dairy section of your local supermarket, from a kosher point of view, eggs are pariv and have nothing to do with dairy. So today we will focus on the foundation of all dairy products, and that, of course, is milk. In general, halacha, Jewish law, dictates, regarding natural derivatives from kosher and non-kosher animals, hayyitze min ha-tahar tahar v'hayyitze min ha-tameh tameh. Derivatives from a kosher species are kosher, while derivatives from a non-kosher species are not. Therefore, milk produced by a kosher mammal, such as goat's milk, cow's milk, and sheep's milk, are kosher, while milk from non-kosher mammals, such as horses, pigs, camels, or even whales, are forbidden. Now the halacha Jewish law requires clear protocol which includes safeguards to assure that the kashrus of a product has not been compromised. One of the halachic safeguards put into place has been the overseeing and monitoring of the production of kosher milk. It was, and still is in many places in the world, even today, common practice among farmers to mix milk of various species together, unbeknown to the customer. And this can be done for various reasons. For example, like to keep the milk consistent in its nutritional value or fat count. Since it was, and is conceivable, to have milk of kosher and non-kosher animals mixed together, our chachamim, our rabbis, issued an injunction many, many years ago against the use of milk from a non-Jewish farmer, known as Chalav Akum. This restriction did not apply if there was supervision of the farmer by a Jew during the milking. Our Chachamim ruled that unsupervised milk may not be used, even though most of the milk available in the area came from kosher species and the likelihood of tampering was slim. Our rabbi stipulated that in order to ensure that the milk from a non-Jewish farmer is kosher, a Jew must be present from the beginning to the end of the milking process. That is, from the milking until the bottling. The Jew must be able to identify and ensure that the milk has not been compromised. The mashkiach, the supervising Jew, must be a God-fearing person so that his testifying and bearing witness that the milk is kosher is trusted without question. Milk produced under these conditions is called chalav Yisrael. However, there is a debate over the need for a mashkiach, a supervising Jew, to ensure chalav Yisrael today in the United States. Harav Meisha Feinstein, of blessed memory, a prominent adjudicator of questions relating to Jewish law, argued that in the United States, milk produced in dairies never acquires the status of chalav akum. This milk has gained a unique classification of chalav stam, literally plain milk, which our rabbis never forbid to begin with. And his reason is that since the government inspects all dairy factories to assure that milk from cows is indeed only from cows and not from any other animals, we can be sure that cow's milk, for example, is cow's milk with no other treif milk mixed in. And in fact, the law is that all other milks, like goat's milk or pig's milk, for that matter, must be labeled as such. Harav Feinstein believes that we now can rely on what we know and understand, and our own intellect allows us to proclaim with assurance that in the United States, liquid cow's milk is 100% unadulterated cow's milk, with no other milk being mixed in or added. Now, halacha dictates that sometimes what one's intellect tells us is as valid as seeing the situation with our very own eyes, and it is comparable to two witnesses testifying as such. In our case, our own intellect tells us that this milk is cow's milk. Halacha calls this intellectual interpretation anan sadi. We are the witnesses, and is used in many different areas in halacha. So now, Pure milk produced in the United States would not fall under the category of Chal of Akum. Obviously, Harav Feinstein's rationale depends upon the integrity and the enforcement of the USDA. Whether this rationale can be applied to other countries depends upon the laws of those countries. And in truth, many question even our own country, the good old USA, 
to how well these dairy farms are monitored and how diligently the laws and penalties are enforced to companies that might bend the law even just a little bit. As we have all seen in recent times, that when one relies only on the government to supervise and monitor our affairs, we end up with all kinds of things like Lehman Brothers and AIG and all the other scandals which seem to surface all the time. And even our Rav Feinstein himself indicates that where Chalav Yisrael is readily available, it is the preferable choice. And it is for this reason that thousands of thousands of God-fearing Jews only eat and drink Chalav Yisrael. And even the utensils that were used with Chalav Stam would also be considered treif, non-kosher, and would require kosherization before reuse. The Talmud in Masech Shabbos refers to milk as ma'achal, food of substance, as we see small children live and flourish on milk alone. So when it comes to such an important food like milk, we should be extra careful to make sure it comes from a pure and holy, uncompromised kosher source. And indeed, many stories have been told about people who were struggling with their faith and who went to seek spiritual guidance from their Rebbe, and their Rebbe instructed them to be very careful only to have Chalav Yisrael. Or the story of a child who had difficulty speaking, and his parents were advised by their Rebbe to be more diligent with the laws of Chalav Yisrael. Once they adhered to true Chalav Yisrael, their lives were forever changed, and like the saying goes, they lived happily ever after. So next time someone asks you, got milk? Make sure it's Chalav Yisrael. And I would just like to mention that today all milk, regardless of its status, Chalav Yisrael or Chalav Stam, needs a reliable certification due to vitamins and other ingredients that might be mixed into the milk to enhance its taste and nutritional value. And when it comes to people just starting the mitzvah of keeping kosher, let chalav stam be used only as a stepping stone, not the final destination, in observing this very important mitzvah of keeping kosher. So please join me next time as we will once again delve a bit deeper into the laws of kashras, tackling one topic at a time. Until then, I'm Rabbi Chaim Fogelman. Thank you for watching, and may all your days be kosher ones.